notice that the uh, picture here is jumping a bit. That's because of the concussion from the 265 weight ram coming down. That'll stop when the hammer stops pounding. It's difficult to uh, minimize the vibration from tools this size. You, you can do it, but it takes extreme measures. The uh, concrete that that hammer is sitting on is a monolithic pour. It's uh, four and a half feet deep, four feet wide, and eight feet long. So it's, it's substantial. And uh, the hammer is still able to, to give it quite a bit of movement, and that movement translates to the six inch floor of the shop as well. notice that the billet is bouncing quite a bit here. What I should have done is used a pair of tongs close to the billet to gain a bit more leverage. The handle is hot from the forge and I couldn't grasp close enough to the billet to get a good mechanical advantage and leverage on it. So it, uh, it gets away from me a couple times here, but uh, that happens.
All right, so on this heat, what we're going to do is uh, forge the end third of the billet down to about one and a quarter inch square. Uh, I'm doing that by eye, and then I'll check it with a stop block, which is basically a piece of steel that you lay on the bottom die, and the top die comes down and hits it, uh, thereby preventing it from getting any closer to the bottom die. So it stops the top die from coming down, and uh, as a result, the material being forged comes out roughly that size. So here's that uh, stop block right there. Alright, for this clip you'll notice that we're running at twice normal speed here. Uh, it looks a bit Benny Hill, but uh, what I needed to do was compress this video into something that would fit on YouTube, but still show you the entire breakdown process for this billet. Uh, and since I'm new to editing, this is the only thing I can come up with. Exactly what the client 